So today we are going to talk about connective tissue, which is one of the four types of tissue you can find in the body. If I was describing the function of connective tissue, um, as the name connective implies, they connect cells, uh, they help you form your skeleton, uh, that implies that bone is identified as type of connective tissue. Store and carry nutrients, uh, that implies that a store implies a storage of fat as far as nutrients goes. So fat is another type of connective tissue. Carry nutrients in a sense of blood. Blood is also a connective tissue. Surrounds all the blood vessels and nerves of the body. So we have connective tissue that are basically forming these uh, saran wrap, these tight wraps around the individual structures and organs of the body, such as it mentioned, nerves and blood vessels. And they also provide physical protection and immunity in a sense of the fat that is underneath the skin, as well as immunity in a sense of your white blood cells. So let's go ahead and discuss each of the connective tissue in more detail. When we talk about connective tissue, we do need to understand that, um, that there are three different types, as it's listed, fibrous, supportive, and fluid. Fibrous being... Uh, Sorry, I should say connective tissue in general is the most connective, most abundant kind of tissue, and there's three different types, fibrous, supportive, and fluid. Now, there is a, a large space that separates the cells within the connective tissue, and that space is referred to as the extracellular matrix. Extra implies outside, cellular as in outside the cell. Matrix basically means the background. Now again, looking at the connective tissue and the three main groups, you can see you have um, connective tissue proper. If you go back, fibrous and the word proper apply the same thing. So we have proper that's broken down to loose and dense. Fluid is broken down to blood and lymph. And supportive is broken down to cartilage and bone. So let's go ahead and start and discuss each of these main categories of connective tissue and the subclassification for each. We're going to start with connective tissue proper and talk about uh, the loose and dense. To get a little more familiar with that, let's go ahead and take a look at the cells that can be present in these tissues. Some are very generic and you can find them in majority of the connective tissues, while others are very specific to the tissue type. Fibroblasts imply cells that are producing protein fibers that basically form the extracellular matrix. Macrophages are a specific kind of white blood cells uh, and they're derived from a category of white blood cells known as monocytes. Leukocytes are a generic term for white blood cells. Mast cells are also categorized as um, uh, part of the immunity, uh, immunity and defense of the body and can, be, uh, can produce histamine or heparin. And adipocytes, which are basically cells that carry out deposits of fats. Now there is also, when we think about proteins, I'm sorry, when we're talking about tissues, and uh, proteins that are present inside the tissue, there are three different types of protein fibers. Anytime you hear the word collagenous fibers, think about collagen fibers. And they are uh, relatively uh, thick and they are very tough and at the same time flexible. They can be found in your tendons, ligaments, and the dermis of your skin. Reticular fibers are thinner collagen fibers and they are more similar to sponge uh, as far as their framework and the structure goes. And they can be found in the spleen and lymph nodes in high concentrations. And you also have the word elastic fiber and elastic fibers are uh, type of fibers that are actually thinner than um, collagenous fibers and they have a very important role and that basically implies the recoiling functions they carry. Recoiling implies that when you stretch something it always goes back to its original size. Uh, you can find these elastic fibers in your lungs, the skins, um, your skin as well as the arteries. And again, note that it says it is not the ability to stretch when we use the word elastic. It's the ability to recoil and return back to its original shape after the tissue has been stretched out. Um, now, I don't need you guys to know the ground substance, so we can um, skip that slide for now. Uh, 
So let's just start talking about the first category of connective tissue, which we identify as either fibrous or proper connective tissue. Fibrous is broken down to two main categories, loose and dense connective tissue. Loose is broken down to areolar, adipose, and reticular connective tissue. As the name implies, this type of tissue will have very little or a very loose protein fibers throughout, versus when you use the word dense, uh, it implying that there is a significant amount of protein fibers present in the tissue. Dense, depending on how the protein fibers run, uh, they can be categorized uh, either as regular or irregular. And that depends, again, on how the protein fibers are actually um, um, organized inside your tissue. So, let's talk about areolar connective tissue, which is typically used as the model type. This type of tissue basically has all the type of cells that you can have. If you look at the picture that I have presented on the bottom, you can see macrophages, you can see fibroblasts, your leukocytes, lymphocytes, mast cells, everything is present inside the areolar tissue. It's a very generic type of tissue. Um, it has roles such as support and binding of other tissues, um, making sure the fluid stays where it's supposed to. Um, it, it contains cells that defend your body. It contains fat, uh, fat cells that stores nutrients. And it also uh, plays a role in removal of the waste from your um, cellular structures. Here's a couple of structures of what the areolar tissue looks like. Uh, on the top uh, left-hand side corner, what you see is basically um, areolar tissue, the larger spots representing the cells, and the lines that you see, either thick or thin, kind of going in all, all over the directions. Those are representing your um, collagenous fibers or elastic fibers. Uh, here is a more zoom-in version of the same picture to describe the same concept. The second type of loose connective tissue is known as adipose tissue. Adipose tissue, as the name implies, contain, contains significant amount of adipose or fat. Uh, so these cells are very interesting because they have very limited number of um, organelles. And the very pronounced organelles you can see is typically the nucleus that are shown on the sides of the cell. But majority of the space is actually taken over by fat. These tissues are highly vascularized because if you want to store your energy, you basically want to make sure whenever you need that energy, you can tap into it. So you send a lot of blood vessels to this type of tissue, making sure it's vascularized and that energy is easily tapped into if necessary. You can find this type of tissue around the heart uh, as well as in your lymph nodes uh, and the eye muscles. Around the eye muscles, I should say. The last type of loose connective tissue we have is reticular connective tissue. Um, this reticular connective tissue, as we mentioned, it's very spongy-like. Uh, there is a lot of empty space in there. So you can see a very zoom-out version versus a zoom-in version of the same tissue. One thing that you guys really need to know, basically, as far as the structure goes, uh, the location of the, uh, ex or the examples for the locations of this type of tissue which is a spleen, lymph node, and thymus, as well as bone marrow. So these type of tissue are very um, active or uh, present at high percentage in your um, lymphatic system. Now, as we mentioned, the proper connective tissue, proper connective tissue, let me go back for one second. Proper connective tissue had loose, which we describe as areolar, adipose, and reticular. And now we have dense, which are categorized to dense regular and dense irregular. You can ignore the word elastic. So what is dense regular and irregular? Dense um, irregular is basically you have a significant amount of protein uh, fibers that are moving perpendicular to each other. So there's no a uh, distinct pattern, as you can see in this picture. Uh, protein pat proteins are uh, moving in many directions at the same time. Um, the location for this type of tissues uh, can be found around the joint capsule, so basically surrounding and protecting the joint, or underneath your uh, 
skin in the dermal layer of the skin, as you can see on the right-hand side picture. Dense regular connective tissue, on the other hand, has all of its protein fibers moving in one direction, parallel to each other. Uh, you can see the pattern. Uh, these are the protein fibers. The, the structures you see throughout that is typically representing as fibroblast. A very common type of protein fiber in these tissues are collagenous fibers. Examples for where you can find these are typically ligaments and tendons uh, that either connect ligaments connecting bone to bone or tendons connecting bone to muscle. The second category of connective tissue we have is fluid connective tissue, which is broken down to blood and lymph. I will not discuss lymph uh, at, uh, at this time. We'll discuss it uh, during the lymphatic system, but we do spend some time discussing blood. So let's go ahead and talk about blood. Blood is a fluid connective tissue. Uh, it does not contain any protein fibers in the sense of what we already saw for loose and dense. Its job is to transport nutrients, waste, and gases. And it has three different types of cells that are present right here. Majority of the cells you have are representing as these relatively smaller pink circles that are identified as erythrocytes. Notice that erythrocytes does not, do not contain any nucleus. Um, another name for erythrocytes is red blood cells, which I think is a more common terminology we use. The function of erythrocytes is to carry oxygen throughout your body. The larger cells you see, and they have very pronounced nucleus as the purple structures within them, are categorized as leukocytes or your white blood cells, essential for the immunity or defense of your body. And then you have these specks between your cells. These are identified as platelets or thrombocytes, which plays a significant role in uh, blood clotting. Uh, so having low concentrations of platelets can significantly decrease the ability uh, to uh, create blood clots. Now the last category of um, connective tissue we have is known as supporting or supportive connective tissue. As the name implies, it provides support for the tissue, uh, for, for the body, and it's broken down to cartilage and bone. Cartilage itself is actually broken down to three categories of hyaline, elastic, and fibrocartilage. So let's go ahead and take a look at these cartilage categories. Hyaline car cartilage is a relatively common type of cartilage. It has a, a significant amount of collagen fibers. It is relatively resistant. And um, the interesting fact is that the collagen fibers in this type of tissue does not, get, does not stain when the tissue is being prepared. So what you get is a relatively uniform background for or glossy looking background because the collagen fibers are not being stained. What you also do need to identify is the cells of this type of tissue. We refer to them as chondrocytes. Chondro implies cartilage, site means cell, so chondrocytes implies cartilage cells. Another thing you need to know is if you take a look at these structures, the central structure would basically be your um, uh, cell, and the cavity that is holding the cavity that is holding the cell is referred to as the lacuna. Lacuna is also visible in other type of cartilages as well as your bone tissue. Examples for hyaline cartilage are present within your joints. On the surface of your joints, trachea, which is a tube you breathe in, um, your nose, the superior part of your nose, the, the tip of your nose is actually cartilage. Uh, fetal skeleton for the first eight weeks is also made up of hyaline cartilage. Uh, here's a couple other examples. Um, we also see, uh, see this is the glossy background that I'm discussing. No. Um, collagen fibers being stained in the background. The white dots you see are representing the lacuna and the structure within that would be your chondrocytes.
Another example for highland cartilage would also be the coastal cartilage you can see right here, which basically connects your rib cage to the breastbone, which is also known as a sternum. The second type of cartilage we have is known as elastic cartilage. It has a significant amount of elastic fibers or protein fibers, and you can see those elastic fibers being a stain on the background. You can see the lines going through it. Kind of looks like a uh, bark of a tree. Uh, the cell type in this cartilage is still considered to be chondrocytes. They are within the cavity called the lacuna. And a really good example of that would basically be your ear. Fibrocartilage is a, a very similar to hyaline cartilage in the sense of protein fibers, but these protein fibers, which are collagen fibers, are relatively thick. They deal with a significant amount of pressure and tension, so they're relatively strong. And uh, they would still have their own lacuna, which you can see in these pictures, and the central chondrocytes within that. Location for this type of cartilage uh, can be within between your pelvic bones. You can see right here, you have your two pelvic bones. And the green region in the middle is referred to as the pubic symphysis, which hold the two pubic bones together. You can also find that in between the vertebra. So inter means between, vertebral means between the vertebra, intervertebral disc. So that's another common location since your um, vertebral column deals with a significant amount of uh, pressure and tension and is responsible for protection of the spinal cord. Last type of um, supportive connective tissue we have is known as bone. So bone has a significantly significant amount of inorganic matrix uh, made up of calcium and um, phosphate. Uh, giving the name calcium salts. It also contains significant amount of collagen fibers as an organic component. Your bone actually made up of uh, these circular units you see right here called the osteon, and we'll learn about this more in 251. These circular room known as osteon are within that you can see these darker spots, not the larger one, but the smaller darker spots throughout and that is identified as the lacuna that holds the bone cells. Now, anytime we want to identify bone, we use the word osteo. Uh, so we have three different type of um, cells associated with bone. Osteoblast, which means bone building cells. These are immature cells. Osteoclast, which are responsible for destruction of the bone. And the one we want to focus on is osteocyte, which is responsible for maintaining your bone. And these are what you actually see here within the lacuna. There are two types of bones, compact and a spongy bone. You probably have heard of these. A spongy bone is where you can find your red bone marrow. And basically, majority of your bone, contain, contain, bone contains both compact bone and a spongy bone. <clears throat> Here's a little more detail of the bone structure. So as I mentioned, this is your osteon. Within the osteon, you have your um, cavities, lacuna, that carries your osteocytes. At the center, you have central canal, which is where your blood vessels and nerve passes through. And then you have these little tiny lines that are radiating away from the central canal, and these are the patterns you see going like this, and more clearly here, these tiny channels, called canaliculi, as in tiny channels. Now, anything you see in the background, so basically the, the brownish color you see in the background, that is where you can find your calcium salt or calcium phosphates, uh, which basically gives the bone its rigidity as uh, well as its hardness. So that's it for the connective tissue. Let me discuss one last tissue, which is known as the neural tissue. Uh, this tissue is essential for communication and the control. It can be found in your brain, spinal cords, and the nerves that are expanding throughout the body. 
The main type of cells within that is known as neurons, and uh, neurons are extremely important for creating electrical impulses. They do the actual action of control and coordination. They have three main parts, soma, which is also known as cell body. You can see it as a central part where the nucleus is. You have these uh, smaller extensions that are coming off called the dendrites. And then one long extension or process which is known as the axon. Now what you also notice is in the background you have a lot of tiny dots that forms the background of the nervous tissue. These cells are known as the supporting cells or neuroglia and their job is to basically provide nourishment, uh, insulate and protect your neuron. So your neuron are uh, gain the ability or have the ability to control and coordinate body activities. Here's another picture that describes the same concept. You have your, um, let me take a look at this. You have your neuron right here, the cell body. You have long extensions, which are typically dendrites, and then one long extension coming from the back, which is describing your axon. So that's about it for your lecture on the connective tissue. Uh, please keep an eye for your quiz on the connective tissue that's going to be posted soon. Thank you.